Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we've got a couple of graphics news stories to get through. The first concerning NVIDIA and a rumored 1660 Ti. That would be a rather odd launch, but that is what the rumors are saying right now. Could be announced very, very soon. And also AMD will have its own form of DLSS or deep learning super sampling through the open source Microsoft Direct ML. Today's video is brought to you by levelgo.com where you could save money on games and software for your Windows 10 PC. And if you need a Windows 10 key, they've got you covered where you can get a Windows 10 Pro key right now for just $15.75. Also Microsoft Office 2016 for under 30 bucks or 2019 Professional Plus for just under 60. And if you use my code JKL10 at checkout, you'll save 10% off your software purchase when you hit up levelgo.com with the link down in the description below. So we'll start off talking about the rumored GTX 1660 Ti. That's right, I said GTX and 1660 Ti. This would basically be a slightly cut down version of the RTX 2060, but since it's in the GTX or GeForce family, obviously it would not include RT or tensor cores, and it would very likely see a price reduction as a result of that. The RTX 2060, which I have one of right here, which I still haven't reviewed yet because I got mine super late after everyone else, just like Steve over at Hardware Unboxed. Um, yeah, it wouldn't have tensor or RT cores, so this card is $350. I'm assuming these are gonna be 300 or less. And they're not just pulling out Tensor and RT cores, they're also cutting out some of the CUDA cores as well. So the source of this rumor is over on videocards.com, who said that they have heard from three separate independent sources now that a GTX 1660 Ti is imminent. And according to this image, which obviously, this could have been faked, I mean, I could literally make this in paint in about five minutes time. Uh, basically just those 1660 Ti, GTX, DDR6 memory and all of that, and it is running on the Touring architecture, so it's not like a Pascal refresh or anything. It is actually running on Touring, and the spec sheet we could see down here, compared to the 2060, that it's got 1536 CUDA cores compared to the 1920 of the RTX 2060, but still maintaining 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and the same 192-bit memory bus. Now, I had honestly been hoping that if they removed Tensor and RT cores, you know, from the die, that maybe they could have fit some more CUDA cores in there or would have at the very least kept the same CUDA core count. So this is almost feeling like the um, 2050 Ti more than a 1660 Ti, which is just a really odd naming. I don't know why they're going to name it the 1660 Ti, but obviously this is just a rumor and a leak at this time. So take it with the proverbial grain of salt as usual with anything like this. But let me know your thoughts down below on the 1660 Ti. Is this something that would wet your whistle? Would you be interested in picking one of these up once they are available? Or would you rather get the 2016 set for 350? I guess really at the end of the day, it's all gonna come down to what the prices are and all of that because the, 60, the 2060, even though it's the cheapest RTX card, it can actually handle ray tracing on Battlefield 5 at 1080p according to the tests that I have seen so far, as long as you're running it down at like low medium settings on DXR, but it can still very least take advantage of that stuff. And also DLSS, which is limited to 4K, so really not something that you could honestly use with a 2060 because you have to use 4K in order to use DLSS, which I don't honestly know why that's limited to that. I don't know if it's a technical limitation or just a d design choice by NVIDIA to limit to 4K, but one thing that very likely will not be limited to 4K is Microsoft Open Source Direct ML, which I actually got a, a chance during CES last week. I was in Vegas for that, and I spoke to a couple of people at that event in the AMD suite when they were we were discussing Radeon 7 and how it could use Direct ML in the future, and stay tuned for a future video. I do want to do like a full breakdown of what this is, but essentially it's an API that uses machine learning. That's the ML part of it. So it uses machine learning in order to do super sampling, it, very similar to the way that DLSS works, but obviously this would not be using tensor cores because Radeon GPUs do not have tensor cores. Um, but I was also told that it should work at all resolutions, which would kind of be an advantage for AMD because you could use it at 1080p, 1440p, 4K, and be able to get a noticeable bump in performance while not really taking a loss in terms of the visuals. Now, obviously, since they don't have tensor cores on the Radeon 7 cards, that would mean that it would be using the traditional 
shaders on those GPUs, so it would take up some of your normal resources, which is something the RTX cards do have an advantage in, because it's not using up any of their shaders or CUDA cores, it uses the tensor cores instead, which otherwise would just kind of be laying there dormant and not doing anything. So it's it's kind of, you know, advantages on both sides for different things. But I think at the end of the day, seeing it available for all resolutions would be a much bigger deal um, than being able to use the Tensor Cores for it. Obviously, once this becomes available, um, it's going to be available. They're, they're saying for Radeon 7 graphics cards, and that's what I was told at CES as well. But we don't have a timeline yet. I don't know if it's going to be available right at launch, which is expected to be in February on the Radeon 7 cards, but it's still very exciting that they are doing this, sticking with the open source stuff rather than locking things down the way that NVIDIA does. So this is all very interesting, and I do look forward to seeing it once it is rolled out and available for testing. And the article over on Guru3D, which is talking about this and rolling out with Radeon 7, they even mentioned that it could theoretically work with RX Vega 64 and Vega 56 as well. So possibly even people running on the previous gen cards would be able to take advantage of this, very likely through a future driver update if it is available and can work on those cards. But for right now, I, all I know is that it's supposed to work on Radeon 7. But yeah, we just don't know exactly when that's going to be. So that's all I've got for you guys today on the 1660 Ti and the DirectML support for Radeon 7. As always, I do look forward to the comments and discussion down below. As always, keep an eye out in the future. As I said, I am... Uh, currently reaching out and working with AMD to get more information about how they'll use direct ML So hopefully I can get a lot more information and provide that to you guys in a future content update And we'll do a full breakdown of how direct ML works and how they're going to be using it on Radeon 7 cards The limitations of it, you know what it can do and what exactly it can't do So stay tuned for that make sure you are subscribed for that content if you enjoyed this video Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it down below subscribe if you're not already and if you have been here for a while, please go ahead and ring that notification bell so you never miss a moment of content, and it really does help out quite a bit. But I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. Tarana. Bye-bye.